yeah. Sam and I, we were taking some selfies earlier and we noticed about this book from Robert Kappa and we just really want, we're really interested in learning about photography in the 1800s. Can you help us with yeah, that? Yeah, the first photograph was taken in 1826. Was so. it really? Yes, it was. Awesome. So can you give us a little detail on how it went into that? So, I was really interested in, like, the progression of technology, actually. Like, this camera looks, like, really old compared to what we have now. Can you well, tell me about it? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It was, like, one of the first types of cameras. Um, they were really popular, like, in the mid-1800s. But, uh, actually, if you look back, you'll see, like, this was around, like, 1839, like 1840s, mm -hmm. but the first picture ever taken was actually in 1826, mm -hmm. and the guy who took that picture um, was actually passed the technology on to this, this other guy, Digorio, so that's like the type of camera, but the guy who took the first picture ever was Nipsey, and it was just like a picture out the window of his room. He you know, just got the chemicals right. And um, as word spread of what he was working on, he got like way more popular and started taking pictures. And now we're where we are today with cameras. But yeah, that was the first type. It's like right in there. You know, they had the different ones that have billows and the slots in the back so they could let the light in and control how the pictures were being taken and the chemical reaction that would result from the reflection. The forerunner to the photographic camera was the camera obscura. Basically, this was a device that could project an image or a scene or whatever onto a wall or into another flat surface, and somebody could manually trace the image onto paper because they didn't have the technology yet to create a photographic like process, and like so they just had to manually trace them. Originally, these were about as big as a room and you could fit one or two people in there with it. Uh, but as time went on, they became more compact, and eventually you got the portable box uh, camera obscura that led to the original camera. The use of photographic film was pioneered by George Eastman. His first camera was called the Kodak, which should be a familiar name to everyone listening to this video, it was first offered for sale in 1888. It was a very simple box camera, which had a relatively low price, so the average customer could afford it and would buy it. The film that it used had enough for 100 exposures, but it would be need to be sent back to the factory for processing and reloading when the roll was finished. In 1900, Eastman created a very simple and very inexpensive box camera that would introduce the concept of the snapshot. It was called the Brownie and it remained on sale until the 1960s. After the box camera, manufacturers started to use 35mm film for still photography between the years 1905 and 1913. Oscar Barnack was attempting to build a compact camera capable of making high quality enlargements. Ultimately, he created the Leica, which spawned a number of competitors, notably the Contax, as well as Kodak's Retina. This wave of cameras was more expensive than those that had existed before on the mass market. As a result, roll film was still the choice for most people. 35mm film came to dominate the market in 1939 with the creation of the Argus C3, which was not discontinued until 1966. While improvements on conventional cameras were still being made, the Polaroid Model 95 was the first instant picture camera. Edwin Land patented a chemical process to produce finished positive prints from the exposed negatives in under a minute. Polaroid cameras are still one of the most popular cameras of all time. They first came out around 1948, but the first Polaroid camera aimed at the popular market came out in 1965 and was called the Model 20 Swinger. According to an article released by Gizmodo in 2010 before the explosion of interest in iPhone photography due to convenience and double use, the digital cameras of 2000 look awfully good for their age. A Canon PowerShot G1 was released in 2000 and listed at stores like Best Buy for only $800. Although it has 3.34 megapixels, it can still hang with the other cameras being sold in a retail store now.
People probably wouldn't buy it over the nicer camera options now, but they wouldn't say anything about it. In 10 years, over the span of 2000 to 2010, we have gained more megapixels, higher quality video, some more ports, better low light performance, smaller memory cards, better battery life, and a little compactness. Canon's cheapest PNS, the 10 megapixel PowerShot A480, handedly outspecs the $800 G1 from 2000 for just $110, though it doesn't have video. Today, if you hand Canon $800, they'll hand you back a DSLR that shoots HD video. The beneficial part about Canon, though, is that an $800 camera bought 10 years ago could still be used today. Of course, it wouldn't be in the best shape, and the zoom motor would probably be a little bit slow, but the bottom line is that it would work, and your Facebook friends wouldn't know the difference when you posted photos to their timeline on their birthday. Uh, you can't say many gadgets from 10 years ago um, still hold true uh, to their uses, um, and the power shot was a true legacy um, of cameras in the early 2000s. To tie this information back into our communication and technology class, we've learned about the social construction of technology and how technology is ever evolving. Um, it's important to notice that through the use of these cameras, um, each one is getting better and better and better and more user friendly. So the 2000s were a monumental moment with cameras and they've um, evolved and grown since then. It is apparent that after seeing the progression of technology with cameras, it is only reasonable to assume technology would keep progressing into the most portable version of the camera. Technology has outdone itself by combining exceptional camera quality with mobile phones that are used by society every day. Not only does this create convenience for the individual, but provides that technology is improving with the needs and wants society asks for. Camera phones create the hypes for instant documentation, transcending space and place, and enhancing self-image. Thank God these phones have inside cameras. It makes it so much easier to take pictures. I just look so good. I don't know what to do. I mean, okay. Time to post my third Instagram photo of the day. Let's see here. Ooh, I look orange. Perfect. <laughs> Gotta brighten this up a little bit. Nice. Get some contrast on there. Got any symbols? Oh, saturation. Perfect. Highlights. A little, little less. It's a little much. Hey mom, how's your day going? Yeah, you Oh my god, I've taken like 476 selfies today. It's been really tough. I'm really tired. I think I need to take a nap. Do that. Okay, well, I love you so much. I'll see you soon. Thank God that we can take these pictures instead of having to come back later for our homework. It's so easy that we don't have to get these pictures developed or anything. It's so easy. It's so instant. It's right on here. It's convenient. Look at that. Forever.